today I will uh, focus uh, the agrarian problem before reform in China. What I will say perhaps uh, reminds you something in your country. I think uh, we need to uh, profoundly analyze uh, the development stages and make the necessary changes in the third world agricultural growth. Let me start with Russian economist Magner. After Magner analyzed the Chinese agriculture in 1930s, he had a conclusion on it. He was thinking a drastic surgery was required to eliminate the institutions which prevent the peasant from raising their living standards. Raymond Mayers, another economist, in 1970 wrote a nice book about Chinese peasant economy. The title of the book, The Chinese Peasant Economy, in between 1890 and uh, 1949. He suggests two major theoretical approaches to the agrarian problem. One of them is distribution theory and the second one eclectic theory. Regarding distribution theory, the large portion of income was taken from peasant in rents high interest charges, taxes, and unfair terms of price exchange that they were left with, with little surplus to improve or enlarge their farms um, and raise their living standards. But we cannot say the same things for the actors such as landlords, merchants, small industrialists, and so on. Officials uh, made up the social classes with the wealth and power to protect themselves by law and exploit the peasantry in a variety of ways. Land ownership became unequal and uh, a greater share of the agricultural surplus went to large land lords than to small peasants. Agricultural technology and farming methods remained frozen at the traditional levels and the peasantry became poorer. With respect to eclectic theory, peasants were poor not only because a large proportion of their income was siphoned away by taxes, high rents, and uh, the la etc. But also because production was depressed in the first place. This was due to improperly organized farms, poor transport, inadequate government support, and insufficient quantities of basic improves to elevate yields.